Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> I'm covering up my rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm here with Maddie Hi. or Maddie Lambert if you watch her YouTube channel. We have been friends for quite a long time. Almost like two years I feel like. Yeah. Around two years. If not over that. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, but we've never filmed a video together because we just we just vibe. <laughs> we are making a very special video today that I'm so excited. Yeah. These are all Me topics too. that we talk about when we're not filming and I find them so helpful because they're helpful for me and I know that these are a lot of questions people ask us as young moms. I'm like third yawn into the video. <laughs> you guys know that I like to make the types of videos where I'm just sitting down talking to you guys. The most common, <laughs> you're so tired of me. This is mom life, like Maddie's getting juice right now, but we met before we were on the episode of Jubilee. I'm gonna put it on the screen here. It's a video that has amassed over 10 million views at this point. And it was such a fun video to record, and I think our first taste of being in a studio recording something, it was at that moment filming that video that I realized her getting pregnant at 13 years old versus me getting pregnant at 17. She had her daughter at 14, I had my daughter at 18. There's huge differences there from being young moms. Oh, she's back. <laughs> I'm back with the juice. <laughs> so in today's video, I just want to openly talk about her experience as a 14-year-old mom versus an 18-year-old mom from every single topic you could think about, or at least right now, which yeah. is dating, co-parenting, being a single mom. Co-parenting is such a big one for me. Thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. We love sponsors on this channel because they provide for me and Cartier, and we love sharing brands, companies, and services that we believe in and have tried out. And thankfully, I have been using Book of the Month for a while now and I absolutely love them. So Book of the Month is a subscription service that picks five different books every single month that you get to choose from or some add-ons or additional books from their website to have delivered to your house every single month. This month I had two books delivered and this is my favorite one that I'm reading right now called The Library Book. They always seem to pick the best books. As a member, if there's any month that you want to skip and not receive a book, there's no penalty to do so. With the code June 5 you can get your first month for $9.99 and that is unbeatable. If you want to know more about the book that I'm reading it is called The Library Book. I absolutely love this book. It is a non-fiction book so that means it's based off of a true story that happened in Los Angeles in the 1980s where a library burnt down and burned thousands of books. So it's really interesting without giving the story away. I just love how page turning and interesting it is that when I'm reading books instead of watching TV or scrolling through my phone, especially during this pandemic where it feels like there's just so much going on in the world right now, it's so nice during my quiet time to sit down and actually read a book, to just sit there and have quiet time between you and the author, you and the book and the story. Because I'm held accountable to a subscription service, Cartier is always watching me read, which is so important because she likes to read already because she sees her mom doing it so much. So if you're going a little crazy during the pandemic like I was, just being in front of a screen all the time, I definitely recommend trading one of your subscriptions for a book subscription. Book of the Month does an amazing job picking out really good books. This was the book from last month that you could still get, but I'm going to put on the screen some of the books that are for this month, and they look so good and exciting. Like I told you, they do such a great job at picking books. Let me know what kind of books you like to read, what books you end up reading. Keep me updated. Thank you again so much, Book of the Month, and thank you guys for supporting the brands that we love, especially this one. Head to bookofthemonth.com and get your first book today. We are both single moms, so if you watch any other young parents on YouTube, almost all of them are in relationships. They're in relationships. They have a boyfriend or a husband, which we're so happy for. Yeah, it's amazing. And I'm so happy for them, but like at the same time, I want that. Give it to me. <laughs> so it's nice to sit down with you, and when we hang out, we can really relate on that. Yeah. Dating is, I think, the first question you yeah. get asked as a single mom is like, Where's your husband? When are you gonna get a husband? It's kind of sad to feel like you're always missing a part of this perfect family. Yeah, it really is. Like, I've been in the grocery store. I was like, I was getting Everly some stuff for her scrapbook. And this lady, she comes up to us. She's like, oh, you've got a lot of food in there. I'm like, yeah, I'm cooking tonight. She said, oh, cooking dinner for the husband? I said, nope, don't have one of those. She said, oh, why not? I said, I don't want one. <laughs> like, she was it was really judgmental, but like at the same time. I always tell her this, but I applaud her so much for what she's done at such a young age because- It was like the same thing though, just a few years older. We, yeah, but the difference between being 14 and 17 as, or 18 as a parent, first of all, technically I became legal when I had her, which yeah. was nice. She, You couldn't sign the birth certificate without your mom. I literally can't, like sometimes doctors will say, you need your mom to come here, like for her appointment. Wow. See, that's just a whole other 
world to me and it was hard at 18 you have nothing you still lack wisdom you know you lack a lot of no credit score yeah and that's like the most important thing for us moms <laughs> <laughs> If anything, it just gives me this huge respect for what you've Thank done you. and I don't know just my age is so crazy to me because I have my own income like I have a job I can't own my own car. I can't make the payments on it without my mom helping me. Wow. I can't buy a house I can't even run an apartment because just of my age like you wow. think having a kid would qualify you for that But yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Let's talk a little bit about how how we became team moms obviously it's yeah complicated but in a shortened version I was just talking with her about how when I was her age I was just crazy and my story of when I became a mom is this complete night and day difference yeah and like I said it just makes me respect her so much more and the idea of finding friends dating at her age compared to my age with a child yeah is crazy so it really is when you became a mom like just explain I don't know it was just I didn't really know much about birth control you know Texas yee -ye, like they just teach abstinence so I didn't really know like because he just kind of told me, oh, I'll pull it out, we'll be good. Mm -hmm. So I believed him because I trusted him. I was in love with him, you know? Like, young love is really blinding. And you were 13. Yes. So technically, I'm pretty sure the laws are at 13. You don't even know. Like, they consider that you don't even know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, when you're making sexual decisions. It, it, isn't yeah. that right? I'm pretty sure the legal age of consent in Texas is, like, 15, 16, That's something he wanted to do and I didn't want to lose him because I loved him. So I'm just mm. like, okay, I'll do this. I just want to keep him in my life. Oh, but I'd love to talk about that more because I wasn't sure when I started this video where it was going to go, but I knew that God was going to send the right conversation that he'd be yeah. talking about. And I think you saying in school that the, all they taught was abstinence and you were in love with this boy. So therefore you just wanted to make him happy. And I think that is such a powerful place that I think we need to talk about. And I feel okay. almost an obligation because there's obviously going to be young girls watching this and then I love I have an older audience as well. Yeah. And they have kids probably, so this is going to be great. What would you have wished the system did differently to where you understood that topic, sexual activity, you know, love yeah. differently? Okay, so I didn't take health until eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And I really think it should be mandatory to have sex ed in middle school starting in sixth grade. Because mm. that's like some kids, they start doing stuff at that age. Like They're, I know it's insane. No, but I don't blame you. They, they, we have TikTok, Instagram, yeah. pornography is everywhere. Sex culture is heartbreaking because our kiddos, I viewed it differently at 15, 14 than I do now as a mom. I like <gasps> have a heart attack when I, I see how easy in movies, in kids' movies. It's insane. It really is. It's heartbreaking. But like, so how do we talk about like what would you wish was different? I just wish it wasn't something people were so scared of because mm. it does happen. Like even it's more discussed now the idea of teen pregnancy, but it's been there since the dawn of time. People need to know the preventative measures to take so they don't become a teen mom. Yeah. Like I support all teen moms, but I think people should. <laughs> Hi. Hi, baby. Oh, surprise. Hi, girlie. Did you have fun? Mm, you smell good. You smell like, like barbecue. Say hi. Say hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, I love that. But I was always saying, and it just needs to be taught, and parents need to be able to talk to their kids about it. Because kids are so scared to come to their parents about it. Like, mm -hmm. I know I was. Because mm. your parents will be like, oh, don't ever do that. Like, that's horrible. You're way too young. Mm -hmm. But if they want to, they're still going to do it. Yeah. So I just think, like, us as a society need to kind of just change the perception on sex to make it, like, something that you can talk to people about mm. without being uncomfortable. Kids are going to see it. And if they don't feel comfortable talking to their family about it, they're going to learn from the world. And let me, I think we oh, can yeah. all see that if you're learning from the world right now, you are going to fall down a dark hole. Exactly. The world tells you you can do whatever you want, you know, live your own life. Almost builds a selfishness in people. If you're yeah. learning everything from TV or social media, which is why I think it's just so important. Family units need to be stronger than ever. So she's saying, I think she, she wants reform in the school system. She said, I felt like I had to do it because I loved him. Yeah. And that was huge for me too, growing up, is I didn't understand what love really was. I thought it was just kind of an infatuation with someone, you know, oh, they give me attention. They care about me. They show me all this, this stuff I don't feel like I get from at home. Like I just get undivided attention. They compliment you and it's just, yeah. you really, so you think you're 30 13, I was um, 16, 17 when I was dating this person, and you think you're in love. Yeah. And I didn't, nobody really sat down and goes, let's talk about love. Like, what do you think love is? Instead, they just go, that's 
no, don't do that, abstinence, don't do that, when I wish they would have presented it in a different way, like, hey, loving isn't just infatuation. Yeah. Loving is, parents, if they would have explained how they love us and how we can love all sorts of I people. I mean, I honestly, I still haven't gotten the hang of the love thing, because mm. infatuation is so easy to succumb to. Yeah. And you can't tell the difference. Like, for well, me, at least, I can't. In the beginning, it feels like you can't. What always helps me is, we're both Christian. First Corinthians 13, it has a really great verse that goes, love is patient, Love yeah, is kind. I love that one. Love is slow to anger. Love is not envious. It does not boast. It, yeah. it is not self-seeking. And it's not proud. It forgives. Yeah. All of these great things. And whenever I am curious if I'm being loving or someone I know is being loving, I, what you do is you substitute your name. Maddie is patient. Maddie is kind. Maddie is not oh, self-seeking. I've never heard that. So if you're, dating, really like that. if you're dating someone, put their name in there. Go, is Jake. Patient. Oh, is we have kind? a boy named Jake. That was my life a long time ago, so that's a bad choice. <laughs> I just picked the most random name. Bob. 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 Okay, is, he, is Bob patient? And it's and it really helps you visualize if it's yeah. an infatuation. And sometimes taking a break. Like when I was a young, when I was younger, even your age, that's yeah. why I respect her so much. When I was her age, I was automatically just spend all my time with them. Texting them, FaceTiming Yeah, them. exactly. Like it turns into a, an obsession. Yeah. You have to like stop yourself from doing that so you can tell what it really is. And that's, that's what I wish, at least for me, I think would have changed the topic of sexuality so much more in my life and made me realize the value in Dating and what what is dating really about? It's not about obsession. It's about potentially at least now we're both believe in dating to marry Yeah, um, and I think that's really beautiful especially as young moms Just why build this relationship build this house just to tear it apart exactly or to begin with the end in mind So yeah. if you're beginning a relationship, what where do you see it going if at any point you go man? I could not picture myself with this person forever then don't put them through yeah, exactly. through that and don't put yourself yeah, through that. It's so as well. selfish. Like that people they just want to have fun with someone, mess around and then ditch them. Yeah, it's I think we live in a disposable society we where really quite do. literally everything now clothes are being manufactured where you wear them like twice and then they start breaking mm -hmm. and then you you buy new ones. So everything's just kind of disposable and temporary immediate yeah. gratification like hey if you're not giving me what i want right now uber eats we have food coming to us in five seconds everything's instant scrolling through instagram you either like it or you don't yeah and i think it makes disposable friendships disposable relationships so much more normal i've never thought of it that way but that really is so true because we're just so like everything is so instant yeah. like literally just i could talk about this stuff forever yeah me too yes. i love talking like <laughs> clearly <laughs> we love talking that's why we're youtube oh, subscribe so, to... so i think the point to drive home is that in today's world especially you need to be constantly swimming against the grain because yeah. if you're it's like a river and if you're just neutral in all your topics you're going to be pushed down you're going to if you don't know what you think about sex if you don't know what you think about dating relationships friendships any values morals you're just going to float down river if you're neutral that doesn't mean you have to be for it or against it, but if you're neutral, so you have to actively be swimming against it, defining, yeah, defining research things, like get to know everything, like literally question everything, because everything nowadays. Seek wisdom. Exactly. Seek wisdom. It's as simple as that. It's like, what is the truth? What are relationships for? Are they for me? Are they for instant gratification? And then you learn yeah. when we became moms and we held these kids and you literally donate your life to them. Your time yeah. is not your own time anymore. Exactly. If they're hungry, <laughs> they eat first. You don't eat first, you eat second, and you learn to be second in a way that a lot of teenagers never learn until yeah. they're older. I meet people that are 50 and they don't even know how to put themselves second. So it's quite beautiful to be so young with so much of a different perspective than a lot of yeah. young people have. I feel like just the maturity, like mm -hmm. it just raises so much once you have that kid, like a kid. Oh my it god, can. I'm so tired. <laughs> Like once you have a kid, just the maturity levels, they go up so high because like, that's another person you're caring for. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, I just feel like you have to devote your life to that and it just makes you see a lot of things a lot differently. Yeah. And it motivates you to try to figure things out. Yeah, because before I had Everly, I was so depressed. I didn't even want to get out of bed to go to school. I was failing mm. my classes. Mm. And now that I have her, I get up at like nine o'clock. That might be late for y'all, but like that's early for me. I get up at nine o'clock. I I'm trying to go to college. I keep my room clean, and like 
if it wasn't for Everly, I wouldn't be doing those things. Like, I wouldn't mm. be motivated to do that. They're, they're just huge motivators because mm. you want to be successful for them, to give a good example for them. Yeah. It's something that motivates me to just seek wisdom and truth and just love yeah. is that the world is so dark. I can't look this sweet, innocent little baby in the face, shelter her. I almost want to just cover her and be like, oh my gosh, you can't go outside. You can't talk to people. Yeah. people. They can be evil and there's so much evil in this world. But in another light, you can instead show them the good parts. Yeah, show them the good parts and almost give them tools. Be like, here, you're going to need this. I'm going to teach yeah. you what real love is because you're going to need it in this world. Yeah. I'm going to teach you real kindness and patience and gentleness and self-control. Yeah. Things that you can't find out there. Like you need a mentor, parent. Hopefully, ideally a parent, but a mentor to, to give those things to you and to share them. And then next thing you know, you have communities of yeah, people that are loving. It's, and it's great. It's And family, it's just so important. Like, yeah. it really is. And just being open with them, that's also just so important to me. Mm -hmm. Openness. I'm like going on a tangent. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> yeah, we've been, we've been at the beach all day and yeah. just hanging out with the kids and really just enjoying each other's company. That yeah. topics in this video but I think it came to a natural end <laughs> yes thank you so much for watching we love you guys um Say we that. hope that this blessed you and we will see you guys in our next video